Next Saturday, the SEC Road takes us back to Starkville, Mississippi. Gene Stallings' research in Alabama Crimson Tide is rolling along after finally unleashing their high-octane defense. Rocky Felker's Mississippi State Bulldogs will have upset on their minds. It's the Crimson Tide and the Bulldogs next Saturday here on your home for SEC football, TBS. Well, Mississippi State hosting Auburn today. Penn State's at Alabama. We'll see you with that ball game next Saturday afternoon. So after the fair catch by Adams, LSU first and 10 from just outside their three. Chad Luke back in there, quarterback, can't find anybody. He's going to run it out of there. Excellent gain to the 17 for Luke. Kirk Carruthers gets it. Gain of 12 yards. That gets LSU out of the hole. Or at least somewhat in better position. Another great job of coverage by the FSU secondary. Seminoles doing a fine job sticking with these Tiger receivers. Nobody there. Good protection again. Nobody there. Luke tries to run it out. Gets a first down. From the 17-yard line, Harvey Williams and Darrell Williams in the backfield. Here's Harvey running behind his brothers. That's a good block out to the 21-yard line. Tackle made by John White, number 44 for FSU. They got a fine combination here in strong safety, FSU. Uh, Reagans and White, I mean, both of them real... Uh, Stanley Shiver type of guys, and uh, all the Seminole fans will remember him. Just a big hitter, both of them, and got a couple of really strong shots on some Auburn receivers last week. I saw, and uh, just just very very aggressive and quick to get up field. See that LSU has got the wrong end of the field position as they turned it over inside their ten, and FSU was a great punt. Been nailing them back deep in their own territory. Have to go a long way on these drives. This time out to the 28-yard line is Williams tripped up by Troy Sanders. You also got to remember it's early in the game, and sometimes a team that is young loses its focus. And it, uh, just like Florida State against Auburn last week, it's 17 to 7. Looked like they're going to start pulling away, and all of a sudden, a more, a more experienced Auburn team and and in in that home stadium uh, woke up and came back and pulled out a victory. First down at the 27-yard line for the Bengal Tigers. Four and two coming into this ball game. Here's Harvey Williams. Excellent acceleration across the 35-yard line to the 36. Harvey was seven of seven carries for 42 yards. Then he was five carries for six yards. He's now got 15 carries in this ball game. But as you mentioned, uh, not real good field position, not in really in run pass situations. You start see, seeing LSU mix in a few more play passes and first down as as those linebackers start firing up in, into the uh, the battle zone. Second down one. Toss it out to Kinchin. Kinchin gets the first down. What moves he has after the reception. That's where he is so dangerous. Last week against Kentucky, he turned about a three-yard pass completion into a 70-plus yard touchdown run. You know, he just had an outstate. He, he had a run uh, a couple of weeks ago, so he ran through everybody a couple of times. You get a little shake, and here he comes. A little basketball. He can go to his left. He can go to his right, but don't go back that way, Todd. <laughs> Remember, those guys are coming. <laughs> to the 45-yard line, first down 10. Todd playing the sore ribs today. What do you say? Do you call him a big play receiver? Chad Loop is hit as he throws. Back the 34-yard line. That was Marvin Jones, who's not only big, he's fast. And a true freshman. Watch him work here. A true freshman. You know, he didn't get here until the fall and played for Miami Northwestern last year. His brother's Fred Jones, so, I mean, he's got it in his blood. And, uh, but he's going to be a great player for him here. Bobby Bowden said that he doesn't think a defensive player has made this much impact as a true freshman since Ron Simmons. And a great player to State defender. Second down 10 at the 45. Luke gets to Williams. Williams is hauled down right at the line of scrimmage by James Cheney. Nose guard. Seminole defensive line playing a little better right now than we saw them against Auburn. But Chuck Amato is, uh, talks with pride about his guys, and there's... Todrick McIntosh has uh, been nicked, isn't going to play. Uh, De well, may play some. Deion Clark, DeAndre, excuse me, Clark, as Purdue is 
Hanging in there. <laughs> DeAndre Clark is uh, also make sure that they've been injured up there, but the guys that are playing, he feels, are making a decent progress. Third down, 12. Luke. Almost a one-handed grab by Kinchin. If he hadn't got his hands on it, could have been a pickoff by Florida State. And uh, just couldn't pull it down. Yeah, and I, you know, he might have come off. This is where he's hurt, too. He's hurt on his right side. Watch him go up here. I mean, it takes guts. No wide receiver likes to catch the ball across the middle. They sure don't like to jump. You see how he came down with that arm to protect his right side? That's where he's hurt in a, a valiant effort by Kinchin. Remember, FSU got a hand on it last time. Buckley back to take the front of Brian Griffin. Let's see if FSU goes for it. They've got 10 on the line. Here they come. This time, Griffith gets it away. Buckley at the 19. He can be exciting. Not a lot this time. Out to the 28-yard line, Terrell Buckley. And we'll be back to Coke Campbell Stadium in just a moment. Rock and roll is okay, but I prefer rap. Awesome. Wait a second. Shady Acres was supposed to get the Coke, and the frat house was supposed to get the Pepsi. Coke, Pepsi, what's the difference? I-24. This is radical. Some may go less. Some may go more. If you're interested in a longer life, drive a Volvo. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. And by Volvo, the car that's famous for its safety, durability, and longevity. Florida State assistant coaches in the booth looking down on the field. We have 6.23 to go in the first half, and the Seminoles lead it 14-3. Van Hallinger and uh, second from the right. On the right was Mark Rick there, a quarterback at Miami. Uh, actually, when Mike Archer was a defensive backfield coach there, played behind Jim Kelly, and he's tutoring the quarterbacks now here at Florida State. FSU has Casey Weldon back in at quarterback after the series from Brad Johnson last possession. It's nullified basically because of that holding call. Here's the screen to the left side. Poorly thrown. Bennett can't hold it. It'll go incomplete. Florida State really hasn't developed a lot of offense in this ball game. The two touchdowns came both inside the 10-yard line. I think you have to say that, uh, you know, John Mitchell and Joey Wessel and uh, those guys, that John Fontes, uh, linebacker coach there at the LSU, have done a good job negating some of the real strength of this team. You know, Dossie hasn't been a factor yet, and Amp Lee, they've been around the football. They're doing a good job defensively. That time it was a double screen, Bob. Screen set up on both sides and uh, well covered. Second down, 10 from the 28. Casey Weldon. Amp Lee tries the right side. To the 31 yard line, knocked out of bounds by Daryl McCorby. Amp Lee's just a sophomore from Chipley, Florida. The LSU sideline. Blake Miller. Landry Raymond Smoot. I love doing LSU games. Name. Massanton. Bouton. Boute. Temple. This will be third down six from the 32. Make the 37. over there on the Florida State side. Florida State not appearing offensively sharp in this ballgame. And that can happen, and you get a couple of plays, a couple of big breaks. Dead ball, illegal snap. Florida State, still third down. Illegal snap. They're going to spot this at about the 26 and a half yard line. Terry Monk, the referee today. <laughs> Third down, 12. <laughs> if 
five defensive backs in the game, Bob. See if Weldon's looking up Lawrence Dossey, number 29. The play fake, steps into the pocket. Run over toward Dossey or Reggie Johnson. Number 80, Johnson and Dossey. Ball really kind of split the two. And Weldon misfires this time. Thanks to once again another Florida State penalty, though, putting him in a hole. Last series penalty hurt Brad Johnson at quarterback. Now the penalty hurt from this time. They'll have to put it away. And Kenshin's returning punts. We did not expect this today with his sore ribs. This is John Wimberly about to punt the ball. It's a good one. Fair catch call for Kenshin up here at the 40-yard line, so he doesn't have to take a lick this time. 5.56 to go in the half. Who's got the marketing plan? I do. Sales forecast. Right here. Presentation board? Murphy's got me. Where's Murphy? This is the final boarding call for Delta Flight 6. Maddie Klein knows careers are right in Delta flight. flights. Mr. Murphy? Yes. You better go. Nobody told me you had a cast. Nobody knew. Now be on board. Maybe that's why more business people fly Delta than ever before. Mr. Murphy, you have a nice trip. Thanks. Already had one. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. job to get you where you're going, especially when you're going home. Going home. Florida State leads 14 to 3, but LSU just will start now with their best field position of the day. Days In is proud to recognize this week's classroom champion. She is Jennifer Marafino. Jennifer, a member of the Lady Seminole Volleyball Team, which has won five straight Metro Conference championships. She's maintained a 3.45 GPA in biology, plans to continue with a graduate degree in veterinary medicine. Jennifer Marafino, this week's Days In Classroom Champion. So LSU with breathing room. They're out at the 40-yard line to start this drive. The best position to start for the day for the Bengal Tigers. Harvey Williams. Runs into a crowd, gets about three on the right side. Let's go to Rob Doolin now. Thank you, Bob Neal. We go out to West Texas, Lubbock, Texas to be exact, where number eight Miami taking on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Craig Erickson from Miami backpedals, tosses his second touchdown pass, this one 11 yards to Lamar Thomas. They have just finished one quarter of play in Miami, Florida, leading Texas Tech 14 nothing. Back to you, Bob. 42-yard line, LSU ball, second down, seven. Off the play fake, Luke. Complete detention. Got the first down, and then he's down at the 46. Gain of 11 yards for Todd Kinchin. That time they're really looking for Jacob in the flat. They didn't think Kinchin would have it. Play fake here. Loop sets up, looking in the flat, not there. Comes back to Kinchin, who's found an open area in the seam. Fowler trying to close, ducks up underneath the, the linebacker. And First down. LSU on the drive again. First and 10 at the 45 of Florida State. Seminoles leading 14-3. Luke has some more time. It's complete to Kinchin again. Avoids the tackler. Down hard at the 34. That was Carruthers' ninth tackle of the afternoon. Let's watch him work again. Carter going up the field, Kitchen breaking it down. Comes back to the football. If he'd have let that ball come to him, it would have been intercepted. Keeps working back, working back, and Brothers really had a stop. It wasn't as vicious as it looked. First down 10 at the 33-yard line. Luke, short drop. Right side looking for Kitchen. Well covered that time. He threw it out of bounds. Buckley was over there. About 70 degrees at kickoff here at Tallahassee, the cool spell came in. If it's below 75, people here consider it cool. I'm just laughing at the, you know, Buckley and Kinchin are pointing at each other. You know, Kinchin's got kind of a, he doesn't have a receiver mentality. You know, he's got more of a defensive back mentality, and uh, these guys are talking to each other. You know that. Second down 10 from the 33-yard line, LSU. And wherever Kinchin going, goes, Buckley goes. An 
audible. Let's see what happens here. They come. Loop hit as he throws it. He was looking for Kenshin. The blitz came on. Kenshin was the hot receiver. Buckley was down there again, and Loop went to his back. Howard Dinkins leveled it. Nice job by Loop for a redshirt freshman to be able to recognize that. Got the ball up in time, but Moss was just in his face. That's it can be a distraction. You got kind of somebody a 6'5 in your face. We'll keep you posted with scores all afternoon. Ron Thulin will have highlights at halftime, four minutes, 20 seconds away from the half here with Florida State leading 14 to 3 at Duke Campbell Stadium. Third down, 10 LSU. Darrell Williams, the lone setback. He's back there for protection. Here comes the blitz. Loop is hit and tossed down at the 41. Carruthers having a whale of a game today. A loss of eight, ten tackles, and a sack for Carruthers. Well, all they needed was a little time there because uh, not everybody was covered downfield. Leon Fowler was covering Harvey Williams and Brian Kinchin. That time, Brad pulls the ball down, worked concerned about the fumble, which occurred earlier, took the conservative route, pulled the ball down. Carruthers has been playing somewhat in the shadow of the true freshman Marvin Jones at inside linebacker this year. Great expectations for Carruthers, and he's not had a bad year. But he's really earning himself some publicity here today. Griffith with the punt. Gets down at the five and out of bounds at the one-half yard line. What a job by Griffith. 39-yard punt for the junior. And now FSU will have to line up entirely in their own end zone. Something inside telling you to buy a Volvo? Oh, the unexpected pleasures of clean gas heat. Heat so warm, so comfortable, you can go barefoot even in the dead of winter. We call this barefoot comfort. You'll call it bliss. For home heating, for cooking, or hot water, choose gas. If you're beyond natural gas service, use propane. And hello, everybody. Rob Thulin back in our studios in Atlanta. Coming up on the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report, we'll check on today's action in the SEC. We'll talk with Conference Commissioner Roy Kramer. Plus, we'll show you highlights of games featuring Houston, Miami, and Georgia Tech. Now, let's go back to Tallahassee, Florida with Bob Neal and Tim Foley. Gentlemen. I think Attila the Hun was rough when he went out on his forages. Bobby Bowden's known as king of the road. He developed the reputation of Florida State University's football team by taking this team into hostile territory, beating them, then taking a clip of the sod back for the graveyard. He's been very successful at uh, LSU. This is the first time LSU has ever played here. Bobby said that 1979 win was the biggest win of his early career at Florida State. He, something. he said he, you know, he coached at Alabama. He said when he came here, they'd won four games in the previous three years. When he got here, he said, when I was at Alabama, I heard beat Auburn. When I was at West Virginia, I heard beat Pitt. When I came here, they said, beat anybody. <laughs> Look at that, the entire FSU team in the end zone. Yeah, Pelagic barely gets out of there, out to about the one and a half yard line. John Morgan and Anthony Marshall making the stop. So now FSU getting a little bit of their own medicine. They've been nailing LSU inside the five. Got to give that group credit today. You know, we saw them struggle against Vanderbilt, and they have really come back and played admirably here this afternoon. Look at that last two drives. FSU seven plays only five yards. Second down, nine. Once again, the backfield in the end zone. Weldon's going to sprint out of there. Got some blocking. He's just going to run it up in there to the seven and a half. 
needs to get across the 10 to the 11 for the first down. Coming up, the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. Ron Thulin will have scores and highlights from around the country. Conversation with Roy Kramer, the SEC commissioner, and a tribute to Frank Sinkwich, first SEC Heisman Trophy winner. That will all be coming up at halftime. A lot of news going on in the SEC with the expansion and the addition of Arkansas and of South Carolina. And, of course, now the debate going on between the athletic directors and the coaches about exactly how to divide the conference and how to get those games scheduled. And that's tough because everybody knows the traditions run deep and long in the SEC. A lot of people thought Florida State would be in the SEC, but they opted for the ACC. Football play there was started about 1994. 93. And as Weldon talks to uh, Brad Scott and Bob Bowden, what do you think about that? They picked the ACC. Oh, well, as we take a look at the SEC standings, I think it's a pretty good move for Florida State, actually. Florida State wouldn't make a big impact in the SEC because of all those good teams you're looking at right there. But taking their football program to the ACC, they become a very powerful thing there, and it also helps the ACC. So, And the SEC did well, I think, with Arkansas and South Carolina. We'll be seeing down the road, although both Arkansas and South Carolina were losing today. LSU, 2-2 two and two on the season. That whole expansion and changes in college football are going to change the entire picture of college football in the next three or four years. Nobody's quite sure exactly what's going to happen. Of course, Miami electing to go to the Big East where they don't even have a football conference yet. So that means that Virginia and Georgia Tech and Clemson aren't in it, right? <laughs> That's right. Third down three from the eight. Here is Weldon. He fakes it, toss it out to his tight end for the first down. Good grab by Reggie Johnson. Once again, innovative play calling. Nice job of acting by Weldon. He bootlegged the ball around and tossed it out to Reggie Johnson. That's a Bobby Bowden special right there. Oh, Bobby, he is, uh, and he's loved by everybody, the media, the fans, and the... Uh, of course, he provides a lot of wins for the fans. They like him. He provides a lot of quotes for the media. It's like he had a question about discipline. You know, he maybe have some discipline problems. He said, you know, if I've always said that if short hair and perfect manners won football games, Army and Navy would play for the national title every year. <laughs> There's that play fake again. Hit hard as Weldon as he got rid of it. levels Casey Weldon who got off the pass anyway good play action whenever whenever you got Bobby Bowden backed up you can be ready for that he gets nailed lets it go and this ball is right on the money look at Fryer looking right over the top Williams in perfect position couldn't have been any better pow he takes a lick down they go John Morgan just a split second too late Weldon's did not see that ball caught, but he knew what happened. Does he have a gun? 54 yards in the air off his back foot. Looks down just outside the 25. FSU leading 14-3. 152 to go in the half. Weldon short toss this time goes to Ampli. Ampli first down. Tight ropes his way down to the 11-yard line. The Swan chased him out over there. Well, that's more what they're used to seeing, that quick three-step drop. If the angle, if the slant isn't there, get it to the guy in the flat right now. Pop, pop. So the 54-yard completion, Weldon to Matt Fryer, sets up Florida State for another touchdown opportunity. Archer looking on and been in this situation before, of course, as a secondary coach for Howard Schnellenberger. Worked for Tom Olivadotti, who is now the See defensive the coordinator with the Dolphins, and of course for Bill Arnsbarger. Look at this, inside the 20, Florida State has scored 27 of 28. <laughs> Weldon walks it into the end zone. There's fire tipped away at the last moment by Corey Raymond. Great defensive play. That was there, Tim. Fryer and Casey Weldon trying to trying to make a statement about what the Seminole fans have in store for them in the future. But Corey Raymond really did a 
an outstanding job of getting his body around, locating the ball, and tapping it away just in time. Breyer, red shirt freshman. He's only 5'10", 185 pounds. It's a lonely spot out there. You're a cornerback down there. He's good there. Here's the run right up the middle. Anthony spinning and driving to the two. Marshall holding down. Anthony takes it down to the doorstep. One of the scary things about calling man coverage, or in this instance, a blitz. Somebody gets walled off and they run the draw. Great job by Anthony Marshall, squaring up Ampley, which is almost an impossible task, and holding him out of the end zone. Just an excellent job. Good job of running by Ampley. I'm going to bring joy to Seminole fans for a long time to come. This is third down and two. They can actually get a first down without getting a touchdown here if they get it inside the one, and FSU decides to call a timeout to talk this one over. There are 56 seconds left in the half. We'll be right back to Dope Campbell Stadium. Think about it. There are thousands of building products in there. So which do you ask for? Just ask for Georgia Pacific. Even if you forget that our southern gold plywood is double sanded for smoothness. Even if steam cured and solid lineal are Greek to you. Just remember that every GP product has superior performance built in. So if ceramic coated granules or Acroglass top coat seem impossible to remember, just ask for Georgia Pacific. That's all you need to know. We're getting ready for a wild and exciting evening out here as he brings it to the line. He's up and running. Whoa, we've got one car still standing out there. Apparently, not everyone appreciates the strength of a Volvo. There's uh, TBS's Trish Regan in the uh, birdcage crane camera high above the Florida State University scoreboard. You talk about tough duty. Right, she's uh, Evil Knievel's niece. <laughs> <laughs> this will be third down and two for Florida State. Lee wants the right side. It's been successful before and is again. Three touchdowns off the right side today for Ampley. He has eight touchdowns rushing on the year now. A 54-yard pass from Weldon to Matt Fryer set this play up. 99-yard drive. Remember, the Griffith punt went out of bounds at the Florida State one-yard line. What a drive by the Seminoles. Richie Andrews. Point after is good. 21 to 3, Florida State, with 52 seconds to go in the half. Well, you can't call that a cheap touchdown. Starting at their own one-yard line, innovative play calling and a courageous pass from Weldon to Fryer to set it up. And a couple of youngsters, too. Uh, Casey Weldon's a junior, but Matt Fryer coming in here, a lot of quickness. Let's look at this touchdown here. Off the right side again. That's Find a third my time. Pen. See Reggie Johnson. Watch Reggie Johnson working here. And again, a good lead block by Edgar Bennett. And here we go. Um, hear the momentum. Lee sticks with it on the outside. And not a bad job of defense by LSU. They just never got it contained. They just never got him turned back to the inside. Here he was searching, 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 looking for the hole. Marshall trying to get there. Just can't do it. Amp Lee has 10 carries for only 42 yards, but he has three short touchdown runs on the day. And LSU is in desperate need of a big play. They've had the big mistakes. Now they need the big play. 99-yard drive. Beckham and Watkins back there. Watkins number two, Beckham number 33. This is going to go out of bounds by a long way. They were trying to pin him over in the corner. The idea of that kickoff, but they'll walk it back and try it again after the five-yard penalty. 
So Florida State lost two in a row last year to open up their season to Southern Miss and Clemson, then met Mike Archer's LSU Tigers after they had to win. This year, FSU loses two in a row to Miami and Auburn. Once again, here comes LSU and Mike Archer's Tigers having to face a desperate FSU team. Mike Archer's football team a lot better off than they were last year at this time. Last year, I think they were one and five. Now four and two, and they had a a lot of things to get worked out in that football team last year. And he feels a lot better about this group here, even though they are young and inexperienced, and he knows he's going to have to grow with them for a little while. Uh, he feels good about the way they're working together, the, their attitude, and that's what's important. Beckham at the eight yard line. To the 25 yard line. 45 seconds remaining. 17 yard kickoff return. 45 seconds in the first half. Florida State leading at 21 to 3. You know, another thing about uh, Archer, he was under a lot of fire last year. And as you know, he's got the benefit, too, of having Joe Dean there, who is kind of the master of personal relations as athletic director. But uh, under a lot of fire to to actually fire some of his assistants. And uh, coaches have done that in the past, and he kind of hung with his guys, and he said, it's the same group that took us to 10-1-1, and one, and we're going to stick with them through the tough times and got things going. Loop under pressure again. Chased out of bounds just at the 30. Carl Simpson was just licking his chops. <laughs> slow down, Chad, slow down. Archer's only 37 years old. He was only, what would that make him, 20? Uh, Bobby Bowden was 23 when Mike Archer was born. <laughs> and this is, you know, he's Bobby's going for his 200th victory. I think Mike's going for his 27th. Got to get 27 to get 200, I guess. Second down, four. Here's pressure again. Penalty markers. And Luke goes down at the 31-yard line. Clock down to 30 seconds in the half. So LSU, a run-oriented football team, now falls behind 21 to three. Tim, they're gonna have to start putting it in the air more, and they're certainly not as comfortable having to go to the air, but trailing by this score, I think we're gonna have to see that in the second half. Probably, but I, I think that, again, they're gonna work in the run. I don't think, it, it's too early to panic because things can happen. And uh, their defense takes the ball away a couple times. Face mask, Florida State, five-yard penalty, first down. They'll move it out to the 35. With 30 seconds remaining in this half. Chad Luke continues quarterbacking. Saul Graves, fifth-year senior, came in for one series for LSU. Looking for the out pattern to Kinchin, incomplete. 20 seconds to go in the half. Luke trying to stick it in between the, the short zone and the deep back John Davis. And uh, you notice that Todd didn't put up his arm that time. <laughs> Todd, Todd Davis had it in his scope. He was uh, going to do some damage to the young wide receiver if he'd have gone for that ball. Luke, 4 of 11 for only 40 yards passing today. Graves came in with 2 of 3 for 4 yards. On the second down. He's going to run out of there. Gets the first down and out of bounds up near midfield with 13 seconds to go in the half. I really don't think they have a threat at tight end, and uh, LSU doesn't want to be in the situation where they have to throw the football. Of course, right now we're at the end of the half, and uh, they'll whip one down the field and uh, see what can happen. They certainly found out what almost could happen against Vanderbilt several weeks ago when uh, Kitchen came down with the ball only to have that, uh, that touchdown nullified. First down from the 48. Luke fumbles the ball on the tackle. It's recovered by Florida State as time clicks down to three seconds remaining. And Florida State will have an opportunity. Carl Simpson with his second fumble recovery of the day. Reggie Freeman raked it out of there, and Simpson came up with it. 
plenty of time. A good job by the offensive line of LSU. Just need to put that ball away, Chad. Try to make something happen. Get it put away. And he'll learn that as time goes on, as his experience grows. You know, but some of these plays he's never going to forget. Well, FSU will have one opportunity to throw it up for grabs here with three seconds left. It's uh, out of field goal range. They won't try to do that. It's a turnover story, and that has been the story of this ball game. One long FSU drive, that last one of 99 yards, but the other two came after turnovers inside. The well, do they ever let Rick, Richie Andrews try to kick field goals? I mean, he put one out of the park earlier here. He could reach from there. We know that. Might have as good a chance with those three points as they would have trying to throw up the Hail Mary. Gives me time to remind you that the NBA season is upon us. Our sister station, TNT, will have 50 regular season games this year. I'll be hitting the road a week from Tuesday myself. We're going to warm it up with a Hall of Fame game. Akeem Olajuwon, the Houston Rockets match up against the NBA champion Detroit Pistons. That's from Springfield, Massachusetts. And it's next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. It's the final preseason game of the year. Pete Van Weeren and Rick Barry will have that. Rick is in the Hall of Fame there in Springfield. Tuesday night at 8 on TBS. The timeout called by Casey Weldon here. Too early in the game to stall. Not quite sure about uh, the pattern they want. See John Eason there. John is a guy that's uh, been at Florida State for the last nine years, a coach with a white hat on, and he's been. That's him. I haven't seen the front yet, but it looks like John. Been coaching all these wide receivers. There's now, what do they call Florida State now? Wide receiver, you. We've been talking about how young these football teams are today, both LSU and FSU. Not many seniors. Matter of fact, Bobby Ball, Bobby Bowden calls this the no senior bowl today. Because there's so many youngsters who are playing on the team. A lot of a lot of freshmen. Only three seniors playing for LSU in the game today. Now we're about ready to get started. Three seconds remaining in the half. The LSU secondary has enough depth. If we can uh, pick them up in the picture or not. But they are lined up on the five-yard line. Looks like a Hail Mary right. Weldon gets chased out of there. Now he's going to go all the way to the end zone. Could be interesting. Do something right, though, is going to be harmful. <laughs> there comes the point after. Well, you know it's never going to be boring when you're watching the Seminoles. 28 to 3. That was a three second remaining play. Weldon sets it up, then rolls to the outside, giving his players as much time as he can to get down there, get up, get set up, and get in position. And now it's just a jump ball. Everybody up. Raymond there, Marshall there, and Shannon Baker, good concentration, comes out with the football for six points. 81, Kevin Knox gets up high, gets his hands on it, as does Dossie. That's a great grab by Shannon Baker. Well, at halftime, the score is LSU 28, Louisiana State 3. Our Sitco history feature today looks back at one of Bobby Bowden's more memorable teams here at Florida State. the hearts of Seminole football fans are Chief Osceola, his horse renegade, and the year 1979. Hi, I'm Bobby Bowden, head football coach at Florida State University. 1979 was a great year for Florida State football. 
The Garnet and Gold started off the season 5-0, utilizing the two-quarterback system of Jimmy Jordan and Wally Woodham, and a bone-rattling defense led by two-time All-American number 50, Ron Simmons. The undefeated season was kept alive at LSU, thanks to this Jordan bomb tipped right into the hands of Jackie Flowers. Escaping Death Valley with a victory, the Seminole winning streak continued, setting up the season finale against arch rival Florida. Tied at 10 going into the fourth quarter, big Mark Lyles had a career day, rambling to pay dirt twice, and the undefeated season and a trip to the Orange Bowl belonged to the Seminoles. In the eyes of Florida State fans, Bobby B's boys were indeed number one. The weather around here can get messy. So people protect their homes with Georgia Pacific building products. Our hardboard siding puts the toughest possible protection between a house and a downpour. And GP Summit Roofing can handle 30 years of weather guaranteed from siding and roofing to molding and doors. Every GP product has superior performance built in. So when you're shopping for building materials, ask for GP. That's all you need to know. There's something elemental in us all. A basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Well, Oshkosh Men's Sportswear is made specifically for that search. Clothing that brings a man closer to himself and the earth. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Find yourself in Oshkosh, exclusively at Sears. It was a sinus as well as, as, as a head cold. Lead weights in my face all through here. It eventually gets in my head. It felt like a clogged drain. It was time to go down with a cold. Last year, 7 million people discovered Coadville. Coadville just cleared everything up. It was like the lead weights had just gone away. My sinuses were clear. The headache was gone. I was not drowsy with Coadville at all. Try Coadville, and the next cold won't seem so bad. Coadville, advanced formula for cold and sinus relief. You think you're bad, man? You think you're bad, man? This is bad. You know what I'm saying? Ah, the spicy chicken. So good, it's bad. Fellas, 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 fellas. Guess who's going out tonight? He must be some pretty bad dude. Not as bad as this chicken. Hey, fellas, you don't know what you're talking about. This isn't bad, it's terrific. Ah, the spicy chicken. Very good chicken. This October at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Georgia Pacific Halftime Report is brought to you by Georgia Pacific Building Products with superior performance built in. And hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Atlanta for the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. I'm Ron Thulin. Coming up, highlights and scores from games around the top 25. But first, let's check today's schedule in the SEC. What an ending of the first half for Florida State. They lead a 28-3 in intermission. Just underway, Ole Miss on top of Vanderbilt already. 7-0 in the first. Getting started in just about 15 minutes or so, Auburn will visit Mississippi State. And a couple of late games tonight at 5 o'clock. Penn State and Alabama ends their 10-year association. They'll be playing in Tuscaloosa at 8 o'clock tonight. Georgia visits Kentucky. No games tonight for Tennessee and Florida. You know, it has been a very interesting year in the SEC. And yesterday in Birmingham, Alabama, I spoke with Conference Commissioner Roy Kramer. Commissioner Kramer, the athletic directors met this week in Atlanta. What were the results of that meeting? Well, I felt we made considerable progress. We narrowed the options which was one of our goals. Uh, I think we're now down to uh, three or four options, uh, which now we have to come back and, and, as I've said before, put some meat on the bones of those options, that is actually put names into the, the slots and see how it adjusts in the schedule. Uh, we're looking at some uh, overall realignment of the entire schedule. Now, I'm not talking just opponents here, but the possibilities of, of uh, designated conference dates and things of that nature. Uh, I would anticipate that we will be back together uh, either by conference call or uh, with a meeting uh, within a week and uh, hopefully uh, be much closer to, to a final agreement. There's a report there was only one school that dissented on the plan that was on the table at the time. Did that disappoint you that you were so close to resolving the whole situation? Not really. I'm amazed we're this far along, to tell you the truth. Uh, I think we're making excellent progress, and I would certainly not... Uh, uh, concur that only one school is in this issue. Uh, 
We have several plans. Each plan works a little bit different for each university, and I think each university has to look at its own interests and its own concerns, and that's the process we're going through. I would not anticipate that, uh, never did anticipate, that in our final decision that we would have uh, everybody uh, uh, jumping up and down with joy. I think that there will always be some concern about any plan. We're trying to find the one that has the least amount of concern, and that's what we're trying to work on right now. We've heard about the plans, but dividing the schools between East and West, is that difficult because you may be breaking up long-standing rivalries? Well, that's certainly a factor because as you uh, uh, locate those particular institutions, uh, it does impact their schedule. And certainly we want to take a look at that. Uh, we might, uh, in the long run, not end up East-West. There may be another arrangement when we finalize this. Uh, I realize the, the media commonly wants you to have East and West. We might end up with the American and National or something else before we get through in this process. So I don't want us to be totally tied to just geographical considerations. It may well be that we end up in geographical considerations in one sport and not in another sport. And we may not necessarily have the same uh, alignment for all sports. But what is good for football isn't necessarily good for basketball as far as dividing the teams. That's very correct. And we have to look at that as well. And, uh, there are various plans out there in basketball. Basketball, to some degree, has a, uh, a tighter deadline than football because we're going to try to play basketball as a conference, as a 12-team conference, starting in, 91, in the 91-92 season. And that's not very far down the road. So we've got to get that one in place just as quick as we can. We've talked about all the plans. What's the timetable to put those plans into effect? Well, if we uh, get an agreement uh, on some type of an arrangement, we're going to work, and our athletic directors have committed themselves to go to work and try to put it in place just as fast as we can. Obviously, we're not going to do it next fall, but we would like to see if we could work at least part of it into place by 92 and certainly by 93 to be well underway. There's a lot of flexibility out there today. There's a lot of schedule changing going on, and I think we're going to have to look at that and see if we can't uh, negotiate our way through that to make that happen. As far as putting everything in place, not only the plans, but also the division of the schools, have you told the ADs there's a certain date you want to have everything done, or is it a case of let's take it one step at a time and take our time? Uh, we have not set a da date. I, I think your latter statement is, is uh, very appropriate. This is a very significant decision. It impacts institutions for a long time down the road, and it's a very... Uh, uh, it's one that needs a great deal of, uh, of consideration, very careful consideration before we make that decision. So we haven't set a date. That's Commissioner Roy Kramer. As mentioned, the athletic directors will be meeting again soon with a decision concerning possible divisions and schedules expected. Well, when you think of Georgia football, a number of names come to mind. The one that stands out to most is Frank Sinkwich. He was the first Heisman Trophy winner from the SEC as he led the Bulldogs to their first conference title back in 1942. This week, following a lengthy illness, Sinkwich, at the age of 70, passed away. The two-time All-American set an SEC rushing record in 1941, an SEC and Georgia marks for total offense in 1942. He is considered to be the player that put Georgia on the national football map. Frank Sinkwich, dead at the age of 70. As Chancellor of Louisiana State University, it's important to me to get to know the students and hear what's on their minds. LSU students come from all over the world. They'll return home as leaders in business, industry, education, and government. That says a lot about LSU and the quality of its students. I'm proud to be a part of LSU and especially proud of the outstanding legacy of student leadership. Today's young minds need the proper positive influence, a steady hand to mold them to a responsible, active member of society. The 10 institutions of the Southeastern Conference are dedicated to providing the needed guidance and direction. Today's youth are tomorrow's leaders, so the final product is one that must endure a lifetime. The Southeastern Conference, the standard for excellence. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, your bag. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own. The kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing. And it shows. We love Thanks. to fly. He's the kid. And it shows. 
At AutoZone, we put a lot of miles on our rigs, so we know the importance of taking care of an engine. That's why we offer the best parts and products for a good, honest price every day of the week. Like Exxon Super Blower, Mobile Super Motor Oil, your choice, 79 cents a quart every day. At AutoZone, we help people who take care of their cars with our best parts and our lowest prices every day, so you never have to wait for a sale. It started with close and comfortable. Now the new Norelco Razor brings you even closer with the same legendary comfort. To reach this new level of shaving perfection, our patented lift and cut system has been improved to lift each hair and cut it even closer without the blades touching your skin. So you get an even closer shave with the same incredible comfort. The new Norelco. It's more than a great shave. It's a whole new level of closeness and comfort. Good look at the men who really run this show. Welcome back to the Georgia Pacific Halftime re uh, Report. Our score, Florida State leading LSU 28-3. In the Astrodome, the Houston Cougars, number five, looking to go 7-0, playing host to Arkansas. They've had some trouble with the Razorbacks, and that is the case today. David Klingler, Heisman Trophy candidate. He didn't even get in for the first nine and a half minutes as the Cougar defense really took control of this game early. Quinn Groby's pass is intercepted. Former Oklahoma Sooner Jerry Parks, 26 yard for the touchdown. Houston leads 7 to nothing. Third down and six to go. Ball on the 12-yard line for Arkansas this time. Quinn Groby loops this pass to tight end Kirk Bakken. He rambles his way in. Tied the game up at seven apiece. Klingler threw an interception on first and goal at the nine. That set up this Razorback scoring drive. Groby keeps it. He hits. He fumbles. Derek Russell recovers for Arkansas. And the Razorbacks, who have won the last eight in a row over Houston, right now lead the Cougars. 14 to 10, that ball game is in the second quarter. Number eight, Miami, taking on Texas Tech in Lubbock. And there are Miami fans in Lubbock, Texas, believe it or not. In the first quarter, second down and one, Craig Erickson to Rob Chudzinski. He goes in for the touchdown, and Miami leads seven to nothing in that ball game. Still in the first quarter, it is Erickson again. He is going to be quite a pro prospect. He reads this linebacker blitz. He's able to dump it off to Lamar Thomas on the uh, crossing pattern. Goes in for the touchdown. 14 to nothing. Miami has two losses the first time since 1984. 21 to nothing is the second quarter score. In fact, Miami has just scored, so we'll make that score 28 to nothing. Now, going on just a couple of hundred yards away from our studio here in Atlanta, Georgia Tech ranked number 15 in the country. They are playing a homecoming game against Duke, and that is also a team that has given the Yellow Jackets some problems, but the fans at Bobby Dodd Stadium when Georgia Tech took the field thought this might be a pretty easy game. First three times Tech touched the ball, they got first downs. The fourth time they touched it, William Bell goes in for a 7-0 Georgia Tech lead. Georgia Tech then leading 10-6 in the second quarter. It is Sean Jones on the option. Runs it to perfection. William Bell. Oh, my goodness. Look at the hole right up the middle. Is anybody going to catch him? Yes, down to the two-yard line. Tech did score in the next play. Game a 17-6 lead. Georgia Tech's last win against Duke was in 1986 as Duke has won three in a row. But right now, Georgia Tech leads 17-14. That game is now just starting the third quarter. Elsewhere in college football, Clemson and Wake Forest, both looking to, uh, Clemson looking for their 500th school win. They lead Wake Forest 14-6 at halftime. Maryland and North Carolina, a win for either team would assure each other a winning season. And right now, it looks like Maryland's on top, 7-3 in the second. South Carolina, boy, they still have some bull hopes in South Carolina, but right now they trail North Carolina State 21-15 in the second quarter. Boston College taking on West Virginia. Boston College's last victory was in 1986 in Morgantown. Right now, they're all over the Mountaineers by 20. Syracuse taking on Army. Teams first met back in 1899, and right now Syracuse leads the 3-3 three three Army. Cadets 13-7. Uh, Southern Mississippi and Virginia Tech. Who made Southern Mississippi schedule? Eight road games this year, and right now they find the effects of a road game. They trail Virginia Tech 13-0 in the second quarter. And the Big Ten. Minnesota tied for Iowa with the lead for the Big Ten. Right now they trail Ohio State 14-3 in the first, and one final score from the Big Ten. Michigan State. Could this be the nail in Fred Aker's coffin? Michigan State leads Purdue 17 to 10, and that is in the second quarter. Of course, our score has Florida State leading LSU 28 to 3. Let's go back to Tallahassee. The marching chiefs of Florida State are on the field.
Coaching Chiefs of Florida State. We are at halftime in Tallahassee with Florida State leading LSU 28-3. Now, here's a message about the spirit of Florida State. The towers of the Westcott Administration Building, symbols of the spirit of Florida State University. A spirit of exploration, of discovery, of innovation, of distinction, of achievement. The spirit behind the spear. Educational excellence at Florida State University. Market goes down. Talk of recession, gotta get out of town. Good folks of days, cut me a break with a day. Meet the bad times array. Looking for a great room at a great location for as low as $29? There are brighter days just down the road. With the day, meet the bad times array. Before your batteries run down, get the energy you need. EverReady Energizer Alkaline Batteries from True Value Hardware Stores. Stock up on a pack of four C or D cells or two 9-volt batteries. Your choice, just $2.99. Get a pack of eight AA cells for only $3.69 while supplies last in October. Look for EverReady Energizer Power at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. And we're at halftime in Tallahassee, Florida, where right now, Florida State, what a surge they put on right there at the end of the second quarter, and that gave them the 28-3 over LSU. LSU's last victory, by the way, over Florida State, way back in 1982, and that time they won it 55-21. And right now, Florida State all over LSU, as Florida State looks to go 5-2 and two on the year. LSU uh, hoping to go 5-2. and two. Right now, Florida State leads 28-3. And that wraps up the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. Bob Neal and Tim Foley will be back in a moment with second half action. And as we go to break, more scores. Enjoy the second half, everybody. Georgia Pacific Halftime Report has been brought to you by Georgia Pacific Building Products with superior performance built in. The importance of looking good is nothing new. We all tend to slow down when we go past a mirror, but we often fail to recognize many of the problems that can be dangerous to our health. I'll be right back with a chiropractic insight to structural defects that can be seen in your mirror. We all put on our best face when we look in the mirror, but most people have no idea what they look like from the side or behind. Perhaps your tailor or dressmaker has told you that one sleeve is shorter, one pant leg longer, or that your hem is crooked. Posture, perhaps, but very often a sign that vertebrae are out of alignment, possibly the unknown cause of many health problems. Our body is designed with warning signals to tell us when something's wrong. We need to be aware of them as we go through the daily jostle and stress of life and have them corrected with chiropractic adjustments before they become serious. Students at Life College School of Chiropractic learn to recognize visual signs that often signal something is wrong. If you want to learn more about chiropractic, consider a career change that can start at Life College. Do it now. Call today. This program has been sponsored by Life College School of Chiropractic. If you have questions about Life College and would like information about a career in chiropractic, call the toll-free number on your screen now. Put one, put two. It all happens Sunday morning. Your first look at the pros begins with NFL Preview. Up front, up close. NFL Preview, Sunday mornings at 11.30 Eastern on CNN. He wasn't looking for a fight, but after being put down, stepped on, and laughed at, he has to take a stand. Man's only got two cheeks. Kenny Rogers, Coward of the County, 1035 Eastern on TBS, Sunday morning.